Yes, my name is uh, Blake Richter and I am from Nixon, Missouri and I currently teach in Nixon, Missouri as well. So I'm teaching in my hometown and uh, I've been teaching the past five years at Inman Intermediate, a fifth and sixth grade school as a music teacher. And now I'm at I'm the director of choirs at Nixa Junior High in, uh, in Nixa. And so I love music, obviously, as a music teacher and I love my community and I love creating videos. And I started doing that when I was a student at Nixa Junior High, actually. I would just do a bunch of different video and audio recording stuff and got into the hobby and I've never stopped ever since. So, Oh, wow. So it's a full circle there. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's lots of fun. So we found you actually through a YouTube video that you had posted uh, earlier this year, back in March, uh, kind of when the big quarantine stuff really started to hit. And it was of you showing how to create a virtual choir video. Uh, this is something that we've seen increasingly uh, throughout the year. Uh, we'd love for you to share kind of how you did that and some tips and tricks to other music teachers uh, so they can apply the practice for what they do. Yeah, let me go ahead and uh, just share my screen really quick. Um, so first of all, immediately whenever the, you know, we had the stay at home order and everything I knew I needed to, uh, you know, create a virtual choir tutorial video because I knew a lot of people would want to um, make a virtual choir and I knew how to do it. I had never done it before, but I knew how to do it. Um, so I have this YouTube video on my channel called how to create a virtual choir video. I'm going to be really short today when I talk about it, but this video is 18 and a half minutes long. So if you want to go on there uh, and find that to go in more depth, you can do that. Um, but the first step is to create a kind of hyper doc for your kids. And I had fifth and sixth grade kids that I was uh, doing this with. So I had to be very, very specific with everything. So first, you know, I have what is a virtual choir. They can see a, a version of a virtual choir by Eric Whitaker. And then you have to create tracks that they will rehearse with to kind of learn their parts. You know, if you're completely virtual, you know, they're going to have to learn their parts. Uh, and if you're, you know, sometimes in person, you can kind of teach it to them in person. Uh, but in this case, we were totally virtual. So I had to teach their parts there. So I created some different tracks uh, of how they can rehearse. Then I kept uh, different instructions here of how to record the video, you know, make sure it's horizontal, make sure you're using headphones to listen to the track. Uh, and I just made very specific instructions on all this and created uh, a video that actually has their music and the audio with it. So it kind of looked like this. And I made this in Wii video as well, by just taking screenshots of the music and then putting um, the audio with it. So it just looks this and I'll skip ahead. We all cry. We all feel so they just sang along that track um, while they were recording themselves and then they emailed me their videos. So I had a folder on my Google Drive of all their different videos. And so in We Video, you can just you know import from your Google Drive some of these different videos. And I didn't import everything for today's portion, but I'm just going to give you a couple of tips when creating these uh, virtual choir videos. Some people, they like to um, just get the audio from the students' videos. So if you want to do that, so that way you can, you know, mix it in GarageBand or something else. Uh, if you want to do that, what you do is just put the students' video in there, hit finish, and then you can save it as whatever, and then export audio only. So it's going to just export the audio of it. And then you can go ahead and mix that in a different app uh, some people do like to mix it you know just over here on the left hand side on we video which also works um, but if you want to add different like reverb effects and everything like that you can you know do that in GarageBand or something so here is that piano track down here and what you got to do first is you got to find a place to line up all the videos so i'm going to find a good place to pause and clip it really quick I'm going to stop it right there. And then as I'm listening to, you know, this first student's video, I'm going to turn down this track all the way and just listen to this student's track. So she has her headphones in. She's listening to this piano track uh, as she's, you know, recording this. We all laugh. We all cry. We all feel hot. And I paused it right where 
I paused the last one. So I'm just hitting S to uh, snip the clip, or you can also hit this scissors button right here. And so I'm just gonna take these and line it up right away. Now, most of the time it lines up perfectly, but you know, I'm also human, so it could be off. So let's see, we'll check. We all cry. We all and this student's a little loud, so we'll turn it down. We so that one's lined up. So now we just gotta, you know, uh, if you want to move her to just the corner, what I would do is double click on her clip. And then there's uh, this little animation uh, segment here. And I want uh, her to be at 0.3. So that way she's small. And we'll go X zero, Y zero. And now she's up in the corner. And now you have to do that for the end as well to keep it the same or else it's going to be moving the whole time. Um, so we got to do it here as well. Ah, interesting. And, Inter okay. Yeah, no, that, that totally works. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's just how... I would do it. There's probably multiple different ways of doing it. Yeah, uh, no, that, and... that's cool. Though. I haven't seen that done. That's that 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 definitely works. Cool. And then if you want to, you know, add in the next person, you line it up the same way. I'm not going to spend time lining it up, but I can show you, you know, what you would do with this student as well. You do 0.3. Now she's small as well, and then you would do y is zero, so that way she goes all the way to the top, and you can kind of play around with this number to figure out exactly where you want it to be or where you want her to be. And that's kind of how you do all of that. Um, now, what I have found easiest, you know, I had 60 or so students participate in this. And what I found easiest is to do about nine clips at a time. So I, here's just an example of what my screen looked like. I did nine students at one time. I finished that video, downloaded that, and then I did another nine students in the video, and I exported that and did that four times until I had 36. So that way it looked like this. I had the first nine up there, then the second nine, third nine, fourth nine. So there's 36 total. And then right here, it's so much easier to do this little trick. Yeah. Let's pause it wow. here, or snip it there. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> Just snip it there and say, I want it to start, you know, let's zoom it in and start at zero, zero. We're going to start there and end uh, still zoomed in, but maybe down in the bottom corner. So then now it's going to be moving that whole time. And it's just so much easier to do it that way than any other way, in my opinion. Um, and so... On this virtual choir hyperdoc, you can actually access this on that YouTube video in the description box that I showed you. Uh -huh. um, and then it also has the link to the final product of the video as well. So that is kind of a very quick basic tutorial of how to do uh, a virtual choir video in Wii Video. Blake, like that, was, that was fantastic. Uh, first of all, just great job kind of being very consistent and concise from start to finish. Uh, you can definitely tell you teach. Um, <laughs> and I, <laughs> I learned a lot there. The kind of using the animation tool to both set it up in the beginning and then keeping it stagnant the whole time. That's a good way to basically see the whole layout rather than just focus on one thing at a time. It's a little hack yeah. there. Um, yeah, no, it's very informative. And this is definitely something that we get uh, at we video a lot of people reaching out about was how to create virtual choir videos, how to create virtual like concert band videos um, and yeah. using what we call the, uh, the Brady bunch effect where you have that grid, like, <laughs> but doing the basically nine at a time. Uh, that's something that I'm sure people really appreciate, especially for the larger, for the larger yeah, groups. The larger and it turned out like great. Sometimes, sometimes their, uh, their, you know, internet can't handle, all of the videos at the same time. So if you do nine at a time, then you just chunk it out. It makes it so much easier. Um, and then you can do, you know, once you get the 36 on there, it's just four videos essentially. So it's not overpowering everything. And right. then you can do, you know, 36 in one corner, then 36 in the other corner, then 36. So you can just keep multiplying it a bunch of times. Really scaling it. Yeah. Um, and there's cool ways to like create.
people that go over it and stuff um, right. as well. And, you know, I have a friend who actually mixed his audio and did the video and did everything in we video. Um, and his video turned out awesome as well. So, yeah, no, I'm truly impressed. Was, uh, so were you already using we video prior to March or? Yeah. Uh, our school district has been, you know, we have a, our, I mean, we have the full paid version. Our students all have it as well. Um, the education version, I think, is what we have. I don't know. The district pays for it. I just log in and it works. <laughs> um, oh, awesome. But uh, but they, I, we've been using it for the past four years, I think. Uh, okay. So my students have been using it for a long time. So they were used to, they, you know, a lot of them just recorded it on Wii Video on their Chromebooks. And then I just got a Wii Video link from them and I downloaded it that, downloaded it that way. Um, but yeah, I use it all the time. Yeah, that was gonna be my second question was kind of how how did your students adapt to all this and being able to do it yeah. by themselves? Yeah, and so currently, uh, well, back in March, you know, we were all shut down from you know after right. spring break until the end of the year. Uh, but then our school has actually been in person five days a week uh, the past sixteen weeks. So we haven't had to do really much virtual stuff, but you know, we have some students who get quarantined for 14 days and then they're doing stuff at home. But uh, so I, I can't really talk about how we've adapted the past 16 weeks because, you know, unlike a lot of the country, we're in person five days a week. Um, but back in March, you know, we all students already had a device and we were already using it during the school day all the time. So they really adapted really well. Uh, and they were making videos on we video and submitting like we did a virtual talent show so students submitted videos of themselves doing different things on a virtual talent show uh they you know were singing songs for different assignments and they'd film it on we video and uh you know they they just adapted super well which was great no uh, that that's uh that's very cool to see um yeah thank you for sharing and i'm sure much of our teacher crowd uh anyone in education can really appreciate this uh and thank you um, no problem. Before we wrap things up, uh, first of all, any advice to someone who's just starting out using Wii Video or video in general? Yeah, uh, this might be a weird piece of advice, um, but don't be afraid. First of all, uh, you know, Wii Video is very user friendly, um, but to somebody who's never done video production or something before, uh, it might be a little intimidating at first. But there's this thing called Google. And there's this thing called uh, we video, you know, help. You can you can ask a lot of questions. Uh, somebody's probably got a YouTube video out about it, or you guys might have a video out on how to do something. And another tip is ask your students. There's so many times I don't know how to do something in we video, and I ask a student. They're like, oh yeah, you just click this button and boom, you got a green screen background. You're done. I'm like, oh okay, thanks. So your students. Uh, even if they've never used Wii Video before, they're used to pushing buttons on random things all the time, and they'll probably figure out how to do it way faster than you. <laughs> so uh, that's great. Uh, yeah. And then lastly, uh, to wrap things up, uh, I know you've got a YouTube channel. Where can our viewers find you? Check some more of your videos out. Yeah. Uh, so I have a YouTube channel, and it's just uh, Blake Richter. Um, that's all it is. It's just Blake Richter. And then I'm also on Facebook and, uh, Instagram and Twitter and on Instagram and Twitter, I'm at Mr. Richter Nixa and that's R I C H T E R and then Nixa N I X A. And then I also have a production company called Blake Richter productions. And that's on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter as well. Uh, where I post a lot of videos that I make outside of school of uh, choirs or just, you know, fun videos when I get bored. So <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you. Um, and that's, that's a wrap. <laughs>